Welcome to MTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. The governments of St. Lucia and China Taiwan continue to strengthen diplomatic ties. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority makes adjustments to the list of the travel bubble countries. And the Ministry of Health and Wellness appeals to the public to support the national effort to minimize the threat of COVID-19. The governments of St. Lucia and China Taiwan continue to strengthen diplomatic ties. On Monday, the newly appointed ambassador-designate of the Republic of China Taiwan to St. Lucia, His Excellency Peter Shen, presented letters of credence to Governor General of St. Lucia, His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack. The ambassador affirmed his commitment to working with the government of St. Lucia towards the development of the country. Anisia Antoine has the details. Ambassador-designate of the Republic of China, Taiwan, to St. Lucia, His Excellency Peter Chen, has presented his letters of credence to the Governor-General of St. Lucia, His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snark. In presenting his credentials, the ambassador reaffirmed his government's dedication to assisting in the development of St. Lucia. Ambassador-designate of the Republic of China, Taiwan to St. Lucia, His Excellency Peter Shen, expressed his hopes of strengthening the diplomatic ties between the two countries during his tenure. Evidence of our expanding and deepening relations has revealed itself in the close cooperation between Taiwan and St. Lucia in areas such as agriculture, education, medical care, information and communication technology, environmental protection, community development, and public infrastructure. High-level mutual visits, as well as youth and cultural exchanges between our two countries have also fostered an environment for mutual respect and broader understanding. Your Excellency, as Ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan, to St. Lucia, I wish to solemnly assure you that during my tenure, I shall spare no effort in further strengthening the friendly and mutually beneficial relations between our two countries. Highlighting the collaboration between Taiwan and St. Lucia, the Governor General indicated that he is looking forward to working with the newly appointed Ambassador-designate of the Republic of China, Taiwan, to St. Lucia. His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack stated that St. Lucia will continue to advocate for the official recognition of Taiwan in the international community. No one can doubt that given how solidly Taiwan stands on her feet vis-à-vis -vis the nations of the world, she ought to be treated as equal in status with every other nation. The world being now a global village, our advocacy in that regard has been undeviating and constant. As she has in the past, St. Lucia will continue to advocate for Taiwan's participation in international organizations and will spare no effort in doing so. I am fully aware of the challenges Taiwan had been facing in her quest to gain official recognition by the majority of the international community. For as a Minister for Foreign Affairs between 1987 and 1992, I never failed to advance her fitness, and in that respect, St. Lucia has never lost faith. The presentation of letters of credence by the Ambassador-designate of the Republic of China, Taiwan to St. Lucia took place on Monday, August 10, 2020 at the Government House. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. In keeping with changes in international oil prices and government's application of the modified market pass through petroleum pricing mechanism, the retail price of gasoline and diesel per gallon and the LPG 20, 22 and 100 pound cylinders has changed. The retail price of diesel per litre and kerosene remains unchanged. The price changes take effect from Monday, August 10, 2020. Gasoline increased from $11.95 to $12.13 per gallon. Kerosene remains unchanged at $7.15 per gallon. 
Diesel remains unchanged at $2.35 per liter or increased from $10.68 to $10.69 per gallon. The 20-pound cylinder increased from $27.35 to $27.70 per cylinder. The 22-pound cylinder increased from $30.09 to $30.47 per cylinder. And the 100-pound cylinder increased from $159.37 to $162.82 per cylinder. The next adjustment of the retail price of fuel products will be on Monday, August 31, 2020. The Ministry of Health and Wellness continues to monitor the situation on the ground in travel bubble countries as it relates to COVID-19 so as to guide decisions and respond swiftly to changes. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority, SLTA, indicates that this is necessary to ensure the health and safety of all St. Lucians. The SLTA's Public Relations Manager highlighted recent changes to the list of travel bubble countries. St. Lucia Tourism Authority's Public Relations Manager, Jerrine Georges, indicated that given the information gathered on the ground, changes were necessary. As we continue to drive the momentum with publication, as of August 7, 2020, the following countries form a part of the Caribbean bubble. That includes Antigua and Barbuda, Aruba, Anguilla, Barbados, Bermuda, Bonaire, the British Virgin Islands, Caracou, Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, Montserrat, St. Barthelme, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Trinidad and Tobago. The Department of Health and Wellness uh, continues to monitor the various countries to determine which should be added or eliminated from the bubble considerations. In doing so, countries like Jamaica and the Bahamas were previously listed but were removed due to considerations of risk associated with travel from these uh, jurisdictions. Visitors within the bubble countries with a travel history from these areas in the last 21 days will be exempt from quarantine. However, they are required to obtain a negative PCR test result no more than seven days prior to the date of travel and are subject to mandatory screening on arrival. Bubble visitors are also subject to all applicable on-island protocols, including testing, quarantine and isolation where necessary. The public relations manager indicated that the health and safety of all St. Lucians remain paramount. As it relates to Bermuda, while they have not been eliminated from the bubble, should one originate from Bermuda with travel considerations via a country outside the bubble, they would automatically lose the bubble status and be treated as an international traveler following all the necessary on-island protocols, including pre-testing, pre-filling of the travel registration form, and 14-day quarantine. Of course, the Department of Health and Wellness will continue to monitor these various jurisdictions, all in an effort to ensure that with the resumption and the continued progress with tourism, that um, local communities are protected from COVID-19. Bubblecation is a marketing campaign recently launched by Caribcation, allowing travelers from countries within the designated travel bubble to visit St. Lucia. St. Lucia has a total of 25 confirmed cases as of Friday 7 August 2020. 22 of these cases have fully recovered and three are stable and remain in care. The condition of the last case of the 86-year-old gentleman was diagnosed on Thursday, July 30, 2020, has improved and has been released from intensive care unit at the respiratory hospital and is being managed on the ward of the respiratory hospital. A total of 3,973 tests have been conducted to date. Chief Medical Officer in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Dr. Sharon Belmar George, indicated that individuals are still not adhering to protocols and thus placing others at risk. The Ministry of Health and Wellness was again alerted this week by the Police Commissioner of persons entering the borders illegally from high risk areas. They are placed in institutional quarantine when found, but many remain in the communities. We continue to advise the public against harboring persons coming to the borders illegally. This poses a serious threat of COVID-19 transmission at the level of our communities. As we manage new cases and investigate possible contacts, the public is advised to take personal responsibility to protect themselves and their family. 
We advise on responsible behavior without unnecessary panic. The public is advised that all of the protocols are still in place. These include the use of the face mask in public and maintaining safe physical distance from others. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is appealing to the public to continue supporting the national effort to minimize the threat of COVID-19 in St. Lucia. The five respiratory clinics remain open to facilitate anyone with respiratory signs and symptoms or concerns. The 311 hotline is also available where concerns and questions can be addressed. St. Lucia receives support in its fight against COVID-19 with the donation of personal protective equipment to the government of St. Lucia delivered through the Integrated Regional Logistics Hub from the World Health Organization and JACMA. We hear more from Anisia Antoine. Humanitarian supplies are being provided to the government of St. Lucia to support national efforts during the COVID-19 pandemic. This donation from the World Health Organization and JACMA is the result of a discussion between Prime Minister of Barbados, the Honorable Mia Amor Motley, and the Director General of the World Health Organization. The World Health Organization made a commitment to support the provision of essential medical devices and supplies to CARICOM. Delivery of the WHO and JACMA donation to the government of St. Lucia is being facilitated through the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, CDMA's Coordinated Integrated Regional Logistics Hub. The shipment to St. Lucia will contain 3,990 N95 masks and 129,200 surgical masks. The Integrated Regional Logistics Hub serves as a transshipment point for COVID-19 related relief supplies and will aid the coordination of humanitarian logistics. It was established as part of the COVID-19 response and will be available throughout the 2020 Atlantic hurricane and possibly beyond as a legacy facility. Maritime operations for the hub are based at the Barbados Port and Air Operations at Grantley Adams International Airport. The Government of Canada has reallocated 401,359 Canadian dollars from the targeted support to Sidema project towards the establishment and operations of the hub. The Sidema Coordinating Unit remains committed to supporting our participating states as they navigate the uncharted waters of COVID-19. The Mogouche Club 60 and Adult Daycare Centre is one of the recipients of proceeds raised from the Prime Minister's Independence Ball. The organisation received $25,000, which it said would go a very long way in helping the organisation, especially with keeping its doors open. First on the list is the renovation of the home of Augusta Conkley and Spouse, who are residents of Bellevue Chauzel and both attendees of the Mogouche Adult Daycare Centre. Their house is currently unfit for living. We also have the sustainability of the center. You know, the center is a big place. And you have insurance to pay. You have the needs of the people to take. Because we, we do pedicure and manicure and all of this. So we need instruments mm -hmm. that we have to get to take care of their needs. So the, the sustainability of the center itself. Okay. We also have salaries to pay because right now, the people who are really managing and who need a salary, they are volunteering okay. their services. So we need a, care a caregiver, we need a driver, we need a cook, and a coordinator who is Mrs. Mary Pierre. She's volunteering her services so she does not get paid for any of the things that she does. The funds will aid in conducting repairs on a bus which was donated to the club and is used to transport the elderly. The funds will also assist the centre in conducting its yearly activities. With the club looking to reopen its doors, coordinator of the Mogouche Adult Daycare Centre, Mary Pierre, said the club will be instituting all protocols. Elderly persons are very challenging to care for. So we'll have a challenge at hand to make them understand that they can't hug each other as before. They can't sit too <laughs> close as before. You're putting it nicely. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They can, they can, they cannot um, play the dominoes too many on the table mm -hmm. at a time. So 
it will be like teaching children eh, to learn something new because even though you tell them sometimes you have to be watching so it will be a, a, a new lesson for us and a new lesson for them to to keep them you know at the protocol six foot six, distance six using foot the mask at certain using times, the mask mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. certain times you know so we are we are uh, um, organizing okay but we need assistant in those the masks and the PPEs, the PPEs yeah. so that we can assist them with because I'm sure a lot of them don't have these things at home. Coordinator of the Morgosh Adult Daycare Center, Mary Pierre. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle of We All. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment or vaccine against COVID-19 and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Limit the number of crew members to only essential persons. Practice frequent hand washing and cleaning of all boat surfaces. Limit contact with the public, keeping a safe distance between each person. Limit unnecessary conversation with customers and pairs during the sale of fish. Wash hands frequently with soap and running water or use 60 to 95% alcohol-based hand sanitizer until water and soap are available. Sneeze and cough in a flexed elbow or into a tissue, immediately discarding the used tissue into a bin and wash hands with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer until soap and water is available. And avoid close contact with persons having respiratory symptoms. More than ever before, your important role as gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow all St. Lucians access to freshly caught fish and other seafood. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle au Creole. Monsieur Ta Janelle, Monsieur Madame de Patma, qui est responsable de formation en gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, et Télévision Nationale PIA NTN. Capositou Nouvelle en Creole, Capositou Primus Hutchinson. Ministre des Affaires Agricoles, qui aussi est responsable pour le service de l'eau à cette ici, tient parmi l'autre gros officier gouvernement et l'autre agence qui était présent à Power Sud du Vieux-Fort, semaine passée, pour ouvert la deuxième phase du projet de l'eau pour Power Sud. La première phase a été finie en l'année 2019 et qu'à présent, la euh, dernière phase a été pour commencer l'opération. Le ministre qui est responsable de l'affaire de l'eau a parlé plus à ça. Et puis moi, changer quand le gouvernement nous a dit que tout ça n'est pas fini le projet, nous ne pouvons pas charger pour Glo, parce que Glo a été ouvert, ce n'est pas de bonne qualité Glo. Et puis quand le gouvernement nous travaille, et puis le Caribbean Development Bank, le gouvernement a pris, avant de venir, il a commencé, et puis il a eu un loan du gouvernement de Mexico, de 5 millions US dollars. Et puis, le gouvernement nous donne des additionnelles ressources pour nous finir le projet ça, pour nous complir le projet ça. Ça me veut dire que, on ne peut pas nous attendre que le gouvernement ne peut pas finir le projet, ne peut pas faire un projet qui ne nous pas même pas la main. Et puis, ça va pas vrai, parce que dans le nous ne pouvons pas faire un projet qui ne peut pas faire un gouvernement flambeau. Et puis, aujourd'hui, nous avons vieux fort encore. Car, commencer officiellement un projet pour développer um, Gloire Vifort 
pour que ça en porte chaille parce que quand on prime prime ministre parler pour plan nous pour pour vieux fort glo nécessaire nous pas ça nécessaire plan ça développement en vieux fort en et pour pas nous pas éprouver situation puis glo vieux fort autant c'est Jean Gatavay Wasco vieux fort cadeau quand les trois casements yo yo ni manière mon ka barbier right full so yo ni nous yo doit pour pour barbier et puis quand gouvernement nous dit nous ka faire ça nous pé pour aller il pouvait situation en vieux fort. L'année plan en place pour plus de développement en paroisse choisie. C'est représentatif parlement pour le village là. On a Bradley Félix qui fait déclaration ça là. Il y a une grande cérémonie mercredi passé pour marcher le commencement de travail pour bâtir un projet de développement qui est la fac. Sinon, on a Félix là, ni en place pour développer, là, ni plan en place pour développer le sport cricket et que vous mettez le grand bol là en nord. Mais il mentionnait, à part l'autre projet, c'est un autre développement qui a été fait. Pas de loin de développement qui a trouvé attention présentement. Là, il y a un autre qui place, plus haut ici, il y a fait un autre set de corps pour vendre. Mais ça, il y a eu un peu de temps, il y a eu un peu de temps. Donc, ça, vous faites là. Nous, c'est des gens qui ont dit qu'ils ont fait un hôtel là. Mais ils ont commencé, mais toutes les paroles qu'ils ont dit qu'ils ont fait fait. Ok, il y a même des petits problèmes, mais il y a même une confiance depuis que le Parlement a fait ça. Et nous, nous avons plusieurs choses qui ont fait ça, nous avons choisi, mais avec la Covid, nous avons eu un chai. Et nous avons tout de suite nous avons eu un chai qui a commencé à faire ça. Le ministère de la Santé, j'ai encore trouvé un rapport de la police qui a été lancé dans ce pays-là, illégalement. Et ça a posé un gros risque de maladie corona. En plus, on s'est mal foutu ça là, on a trouvé en quarantaine les lois découvertes. Et plusieurs qui ont resté en commun. Le ministère de la Santé a continué à conseiller et à vêtir pour le public là, pas à jean ces c'est mon salaire en caillou. Le ministère de la Santé dit que, pendant qu'il a essayé pour ménager à faire des maladies corona et pour conduire une investigation concernant la quantité de membres publics qui peuvent déjà en contact et puis qui ne pas suivre la quarantaine, il a continué pour faire appel. Pour le public, la pour responsabilité personnellement, pour protéger le avec la famille et aussi le ministère qui a crié à ce public là, pour ne pas tracasser le corps trop et pour continuer pour suivre les protocoles qui sont en place. Un effort national pour aider à ce menace, mauvaise maladie, toutes ces, ces cliniques là qui ont resté ouvertes. Le ministère de la Santé a demandé à tous les citoyens pour coopérer pour, pour aider ou aider à ce menace, mauvaise maladie, ça là. Toutes ces cliniques là qui ont resté à opération pour faciliter n'importe qui qui a montré des signes d'étouffement et qui ont sa téléphone aussi. 311. Le ministère de la Santé a continué pour conseiller public là pour continuer à laver la main et puis savon et glou. Service sanitizer, rester 6 pieds de distance, il y en a l'autre. Service en masse à souffrir de la public. Et le dernier cas de maladie corona qui était paru le 20 juillet, parce que un grand citoyen, 80 ans de l'âge, qui a sorti en bas à ICU et présentement, a reçu un traitement à l'hôpital Victoria. C'est comme ça, nous avons trouvé une nouvelle là. Je vais vous remercier pour regarder et je vais vous donner une invitation. Je ne peux pas considérer que ça fait la vie. Je vais vous donner une autre nouvelle. Je vais vous donner une autre nouvelle. Je vais vous donner une autre nouvelle. Merci, Apple Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.